Hey guys, Noons here. Welcome back to Airborne RC. Uh, in my garage, uh, working on the HSD Super Jets Viper. Um, was supposed to go to Jet Jam in Tucson this weekend. Uh, my job, I had to end up uh, working yesterday with all the coronavirus and everything. I had to support some people that are out there doing good things in Arizona. Um, so I didn't get to go out there. Really wish I did. Uh, would have got to meet Wild Bill. Um, Terry from uh, RC Bad Boys uh, would have been fun. Uh, Nick Riddell from Tucson. Uh, sorry guys, I couldn't make it. Um, it. Just wasn't in my cards. Well, today, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set up the Spirit Arrow Gyro, and I'm gonna give you guys a basic rundown on how the gyro works and what capability you guys can get with it. You guys ready for it? All right, let's get some. Awesome. Alright guys, <clears throat> so before we begin with the Spirit Arrow, you're going to have to go to spiritsystems.com, the link's right below you, and you're going to want to go ahead and download the software that's called Spirit Arrow. If you download the different software um, for the fly bar unit, the icons look almost the same. Go over here and open it up so you guys can see it. And you can see where it says Spirit Settings, right? So if you see one says Spirit Settings, if you see the one that says Spirit Settings, that's not the one you want. That's for a fly bar unit for a helicopter, okay? And you'll know that as soon as you plug it in, it'll tell you it's not the right one. So you want to go ahead and get the one that says Spirit Arrow. All right? <clears throat> now when you get your Spirit System, guys, I'm going to go ahead and move my camera. It comes with the USB dongle for free. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to plug that into your computer and you should get the red and blue lights that you're going. And then it comes with a nice extra long lead. All right, guys, and it's going to connect, as you can see here, into the SYS. That's for system, okay? Now I have my battery already plugged in. Uh, this is the MFC 2085 board. I kind of like this thing, guys. Uh, you can leave your battery hooked in and you're not using any power, all right? So let's go ahead and let's get this thing set up so I can show you guys the spirit system. Let's go ahead and wake up our transmitter. All right, transmitter's awake. And we're gonna go ahead and wake up the HSD jets. And by doing that, we're gonna go ahead and we click these two buttons together and you're gonna see it turn on. All right, let it go. We're gonna wait for the spirit to go ahead and go off. And you can hear the servos went through, and now she's ready. All right, guys. <clears throat> now we're going to go back here to the laptop. And we're going to go ahead and initialize our Spirit Aero software. And when you guys do it this way, you can see it comes up connected. All right. Now, three months ago, they had a new software version 1.40. My gyro is fairly new, so it came already updated. So if you bought a used one or you have an old one, update it to the new uh, software. They got some bank switching and some other stuff that I took advantage of. <clears throat> All right. So once you're going ahead and connected, you're going to see these tabs up at the top. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you about Spirit, move from left to the right. Left to the right. Don't jump over. If you do, you're going to get lost, okay? So the first thing you want to do, and I already set this thing up, guys. Before you even hook it up to your plane, you want to come over here to your general tab, and you can do all this stuff afterwards, okay? The main thing I'm going to tell you guys is you're going to go over here to your servos. So for me, so I don't get messed up, here is your orientation, okay guys? These are all the ones that are selected for you. I go with horizontal zero, and if you can see... The arrow's pointing to the front of the aircraft. So this means it pins to the back, okay? Now, if I put horizontal 180, you could see the pins would go to the front. Zero inverted and so on and so on. You could put this thing, guys, in any direction you want. I like this one right here. I'm doing SRXL from my receiver to my gyro. That's my preference, guys. Uh, one cable. If you do do the PWM side, uh, you do get a cable where it's just one servo lead. 
and each wire is a signal wire. So you would have three servo connectors into your receiver that connect into one wire into the unit. I just prefer to use SRXL, the my other channels that just go from the receiver straight to the MFC 2085. Okay, guys? As soon as you have that selected, you'll go over here to your channels. Okay? As you can see, throttle, I have it unassigned because I'm doing throttle straight from the receiver right to the unit. <clears throat> Aileron, elevator, rudder. Now, these aren't the channels coming from the receiver, guys. This is just what's assigned in the unit, okay? Now, let's go ahead and get out of that. I went off on a little tangent. So, guys, the first thing you do before you even hook this thing up to servos, you're going to figure out which way you're going to go ahead and you're going to set it. Pins to the back, pins to the front, on its side. You're going to go ahead and select what type of receiver you're using. PWM, PPM, Spectrum, SBUS, Jetty, and so forth. Once you got that, I told you not to jump, but this is the first time, right? You're going to go to servos. Most important part, guys, I say again, most important part. You're going to go ahead and set up your pulse and your frequency. A lot of um, gyros out there, quote unquote, do it automatically. Wrong. They set it to the default of 1520 and 50 megahertz. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, but if you have some high voltage servos and let's say you're at a 1520 pulse, but you're at a 333 megahertz on a frequency because it ha it could take that much information, why wouldn't you send it, set it to be most optimal? You know, with 50, yeah, that's fine, but every servo out there, guys. So right now I'm setting it at the 1520, 50 megahertz. This is the default. The HSD Jets servos are 1520, 333. So you guys can go ahead, if you have an HSD Jets, guys, you can go all the way up to 333, 200, 150. Just, if you guys are familiar with helicopters, this is what you guys want. If you set it at the wrong thing, it's going to lag. You're not going to have uh, proper positioning. Now, if you're running this gyro and you notice that um, in a helicopter world, we call it a slow wag, okay? Uh, basically... The gyro's telling the servo, A, go ahead and correct, but it's not sending the pulse fast enough to what the uh, servo can handle. So instead of the servo making its um, deflections like, you know, real quick, like you see on AS3X, it'll be more jagged. So you'll see a little like robotic movement. And that's going to be this, guys. Key point in this, if you guys are using some high grade, high voltage, $150 servos, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of this, guys? Now, Bavarian Demon Cortex, to say it's set, it's set automatically. How does it set it automatically? If it sends out too high of a pulse, it's going to fry out your servos. So they go ahead and they set it at a default length. This is one added advantage of the Spirit if you really want to fine-tune an aircraft, guys. Once you guys got this set and everything's all good, right? You guys are going to come over here to the backup tab and you're going to hit save. That's going to save your settings, okay? Now, you have your settings all saved, the correct frequency, the orientation, all that hoopla, right? Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to install your gyro. Now, if you see what I did, fellas, is I have my SRXL cable coming from SRXL on the receiver right into the rudder channel. Now, if you don't, you notice that says elevator pitch and aileron. That's your tail and your aileron, your elevator. Each one of these is a signal wire. So it'll go from a single normal, uh, oh God, brain fart, three lead, right, into here. And then out here, each wire will get its own servo connector. And it's just, all it's doing, guys, is it just wants the signal. But I like it doing it this way. And then from here, channel one, two, and three, that's my elevator my ailerons, and my rudder. Right. And you can see I'm not using channel 3. Channel 3, you can go ahead and use that if you have a dual aileron setup, or if you have like a fixed wing that you're going to have uh, uh, elevons, stuff like that. But this is the way it's set up for a standard. 
And you guys want to go ahead and use the double stick tape that it comes with because the gyro, it's actually balanced, uh, not balanced, but it's um, tuned to the vibration of this guy, okay? So now that you got that in and set up, we'll go through the steps on how to go ahead and set up the gyro. Now guys, what I'm going to show you guys is a very basic initial setup. When you guys get this thing up in the air, you're going to have to fine tune the gyro. When I mean fine tune the gyro, we're looking for auscultations, especially for a jet. You know, if you got your gyro set up too high and you're coming in, in a dive, it's going to shake apart. Um, my buddy who went to Jet Jam yesterday in Tucson, uh, sorry Terry, uh, sorry Nick, I didn't make it out there. I got called up to work. Uh, governor called up the National Guard. I'm not National Guard, but I support them, so I couldn't make it up to Jet Jam. And uh, I had a buddy who was flying the shock jet, and he was using the Bavarian Demon Cortex. And he was flying around down here, and everything was great. But when he was up in Tucson, he went in a really good dive, picked up speed. He started oscillating because of his gyro. It ripped his tail apart. He flat spin to the ground. And he uh, shock jet's not a total destroy. He can fix it, but it's just one of those things, guys. So, guys, <clears throat> back to what we were doing. We set up the frequency, we set up the orientation, we plugged her all in, she's good to go. Now we connect back in and we see that we're connected. We're going to go right back to here. Model is going to be plain. You have the option for fixed swing, but we'll stick with plain. Right? We don't have a geolink, so that's more for helicopters. Now we'll go to channels. Now this is where it's going to go ahead and map your channels, guys. Now I have mine set up a little different. Um, I have a stabilization function. That's my rescue mode. And uh, my global gain. You can set your gain from the transmitter or you could set it from the app. Now what I'm doing is I'm using the banks. And what the banks is, it, imagine the banks being like profiles. So if I have it on bank one, you know, on bank zero, just say that's gyro off, um, no gains, and I have uh, high rates, you know, I can do everything. Then when I go to bank two, it's like a completely different profile. I can have a stabilization function, um, a, st uh, a rescue function. I can have a totally different gain. I can have head holding mode versus um, rate mode. You could just make it a completely different thing and you can have it set up on three banks, bank zero, bank one, bank two. You could basically have three complete flight setups. Um, on the complete machine and I mean you can do everything completely different and I assign that to my channel 7 here Flaps are unassigned Reason is because I got the flaps going from the receiver to the MFC board along with my throttle My gyro gain is uninstalled guys Because what I have is I can go ahead and set the gain up on channel 1 And then assign like channel 9 to go ahead and play with my channel 1 But I prefer not to do that. I will have my gains set up uh, on my uh, computer. I have the advantage of turning the gyro off. So if it's too high or anything, I can turn the gyro off and adjust it when it comes back down. It's nice to have the feature to adjust the gains and stuff, guys, from the transmitter while you're in flight. Uh, I'm going a little old school so I can take uh, full uh, advantage of the features that we got in here. Later on, I can go ahead and I can assign that to channel 1. And then like on channel 9 of my receiver saying, hey, this is what you're going to go ahead and you're going to see. And that's how you set it up over here, guys. All right. Diagnostics tab. Next important piece, guys. Now you can see my aileron zero, my elevator zero, my rudder zero. Don't worry about the gyro. Don't worry about this. Worry about your control surfaces. Okay, guys? The only ones you're receiving. So you notice there's zero. Right? You notice they're not jumping around or going anything crazy because they're not supposed to, right? So, the way that this works, guys, is when you first get it, let's go ahead and give it um, right aileron. Now, you notice it says 99, right? Full. And then you go over here, and it goes to negative 100. Well, let's go ahead. Let's go to on our transmitter, and then we'll go ahead and go to servo setup. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our travel. And these are your endpoints. So when I go this way, 
When I go to the right, notice it's 99. If I go one up, it goes to 100. Okay? Now I go the other way, 100. 100. All right, guys? Now that's what you want to do with your throws. It doesn't matter what your transmitter says. Your transmitter endpoint could be at 105 or 111. It could be at 82. What we care about is what the gyro is seeing. So we go right rudder, we're at 100. We don't want 101, we don't want 97. We go left, aileron, I'm sorry. Now we got negative 100. All right. Now we got that, we'll go okay on our transmitter. Now let's go full up elevator. 99. All right, now let's go ahead and open up our elevator. We'll go ahead and we'll go full up. We'll go one more. Now we got 100. Awesome, now we'll go down elevator. We got 100. 100, 100. Aileron, 100 and 100. Now let's go right rudder. 100 and go left rudder. 100. That's it, guys. That's all you have to do on this diagnostic tab. Everything else is if you're going to have bank switching like I do, so you can have a whole bunch of different banks. Now, when you have the banks, this doesn't change. So what you have to do is, so I'm on bank zero, right? And you notice nothing changed on bank zero. Okay, now on bank zero, I have my stabilization engaged. I can also disengage my stabilization and stay in head locking mode. All right, guys. Now let's go to bank one. You notice how this says 60% headlock bank, and this still says engaged. It's because the software doesn't recognize the banks when you do it. So you go to servos, you'll come back, and now we're at 60% in normal rate with no uh, stabilization. This is like AS3X, if you're familiar with E-Flight, okay? Now I'll go to bank two, and we'll come back. Zero percent, guys, that's gyro off. That's the way I'm gonna go ahead and take off. That's the way we're gonna go ahead and rock and roll. Okay, guys? And then I can go straight up. You don't see anything going on, but I know I'm in bank zero. So when I go back to diagnostics, I'm back in head locking mode and my stabilization is engaged. That's basically how you select it. Now when you're doing your gyro setup and you want to do your banks, when you're doing your changes, you have to actually tell it what active bank you want it to be looking at. So if I go to bank one, it'll go to bank one and any change I make and I save will only do it to bank one. So you can have different gyro gains, gyro setups, stabilizations. You know, you can have bank zero for easy flying. Let's just go ahead and do some loops and stuff. You can go to bank two, it can be twitchy, you do your knife edges. I mean, the world's your oyster on this, guys. The other thing you have is you have a spectrum analyzer. I won't be utilizing that now. And what ends up happening is you go ahead and you can start recording it and it does all your axes, okay? So what ends up happening is you start shaking it and you notice that I'm starting to shake the plane. Now this is where I'm getting it on the X. All right? And I can go to image. And what it does is it'll bring up an image like a reader for you to go ahead and bring up so you can save this. So you can actually have the great thing with this guys is you can go through all your little axes. And I learned this on my helicopter. Uh, it lets you know if there's any vibration, if you have a bad prop, an engine imbalance, a rotor head that's in balance. And what you want to be is you want to be under 50. If you're under 50, your gyro is going to work fine. There's no vibrations. It's going to go ahead and run smooth and everything's clear to go. If it's above, then you're going to find out. And it's going to tell you, remember that little needle that it had? If you go ahead and you go on it, like on the helicopter, it will tell you what axis it is and what to most likely look on. So if it's on your Z axis, you're going to be looking at your rotor head, your main shaft, and stuff like that, guys. Okay. Now let's go back to this general tab. I forgot to go ahead and talk to you guys about this. Oh, disconnected. Let's go ahead and connect again. It does that, guys. 
if you guys are familiar with fly bar units, it just lets you know that in bank switching, it, uh, it won't let you know real time. Let's go over here to channels. Now I have my stabby set up, so I can go ahead and set up another guy. Look at all this stuff I can set up. I can put elevator gain on a switch or a dial, aileron, rudder, individually. I can have all three gains on here if I wanted to. Rescue inclination, how steep do you want it to go? Direction control rate, rescue throttle, fast feed forward, stick dead band, which is like expo, aileron differential, output to channel zero, spectrus analysis, guys. So like, let's say I'm flying and I know I got a problem on Z. I can have this set up on a switch so when I hit it, it starts recording midair. And then I can stop recording and then go to that two image and actually look at it. Set trims or stabby function. All these things, guys, you can go ahead and set up on a switch if you guys wanted to. All right. Diagnostics, we talked about that. Servos. All right, guys. We already talked about servo parameters. Now you got sub trim tuning. Now, first thing you guys are going to do on your plane is make sure your mechanical zero is set right. Now, I say mechanical zero because I'm a helicopter guy. Uh, but you guys talk uh, in planes, it's neutral throws. So you want to make sure your throws are in a neutral position and you do that mechanically by twisting or untwisting the links. Okay, guys? Once you've got that set up to on the plane with your receiver turned on and you put in the gyro, it might change a little bit. Okay? You, it might be dead on nuts, but you're just like one millimeter off and you twist the horn half a turn and it's too much. You go ahead, you'd click that's square and you'd go ahead and you do your sub trimming right in here with these little bars and you get that so your throws are completely dead center once you have the dead center you'll uncheck the box the gyro will remember that boom done now next important factor other than the orientation of the gyro and the pulse and hertz of the um, servos servo direction do not reverse anything in your transmitter I don't care if it's going down when you push up or it's going right if you go left don't touch nothing in your transmitter if you do it in your transmitter yeah it will go the direction you want it to go but the gyro still thinks up is down down is up and it will crash this is where people say oh this gyro sucks this gyro mess made me uh, crash my plane. Blah, 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 blah. No. You fucked up. Leave the transmitter alone and do this. Sorry, guys, about my language, but I get a little bit adamant when it comes with the technology because the technology works. But there's the one problem. It's the human problem. If the human messes this up, they're not going to own up to their mistakes. It was the gyro's fault. Well, if it's a gyro's fault, set up the switch for zero. So if the gyro's acting weird, shut the gyro off. And then the only person you got to blame is yourself. All right? Remember, guys, do not reverse anything in the transmitter. In here. I had to change my two and my four. That was it, guys. Now, let's say, and, and you guys can go ahead and see, guys. I'll show you. The only two things that are reversed on my transmitter is my gear and my flaps. And those are not going through the gyro. That's just my going straight from the receiver to the MFC. Everything else is in standard. Okay. Now we got that set up, we'll go to limits. This is your aileron range, your elevator range, and your rudder. Okay. I haven't touched anything here. These default rates worked great for the high rates uh, that this HSD Jets is doing. Now let's just say you're getting servo binding because it's moving too far up or too far down or too far left. This is where you go ahead and you set it. So on the aileron, this is left, this is right, okay? This is up, this is down. Now obviously when you go ahead and you move this, right, you think you have to go ahead and have the elevator stick up. Right? No. As soon as you click that bad boy, it's going to go ahead and it's going to go ahead and move it to the top until you click something else. Okay? Next 
is your sensor tab. This is your gain. I have mine at 60% to start off with. And I have this default of 50 on elevator, 50 on aileron, and 50 on rudder. Now this is how this works. Everybody should have basic math skills. I'm at 50% all around, but an overall 60% gain. Okay? I'm not getting 50% here. 60% of 50%. So if this was at 50, I would be at half of 50. So my gains would actually be 25. So right now being at 60%, guys, they're roughly, you know, I'm going to call it like 28, 30%. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and start it off low. And what I'm doing, guys, is I'm looking for... I'm going to fly the plane and I know the plane's going to fly sweet because this plane flies sweet without a gyro and the gyro is just going to make it that much more sweeter so I don't really need overkill. The plane's not a garbage flying plane. And what I'm looking at guys because the high speed passes. I don't care about low. I care about the high. So I'm going to be doing a lot of diving, fast pass bys and I'm looking for oscillations. Now, if I'm oscillating, I can go ahead and change this out. Now, you guys can put this to a switch or a dial and change it in flight. But what it's going to do is it'll change all of them the same. So if you bump this up to 100, it's going to go 50 across. So scenario, say you bump this up to 100 and your elevator's good, your rudder's good, but you got a little oscillation on the aileron at 100. Well, then you can go over here and just individually change that. Back. And that's how you change your gains right there, guys. And if you notice, I have 60% for head holding in bank zero, and that's for my stabilization. My bank one goes to negative 60, and that puts me back into my rate mode, you know, just like AS3X. And then bank two, 0%, it's off. Okay, this is your stabilization tab right here, guys. So this is where you can select your stabilization. And if you notice on bank one, I have it selected. I have nothing there and I have nothing there because I only want it on my bank one. Now you have disabled, rescue normal. Rescue normal is uh, you're familiar with the safe select on E-Flight, works the same way. Then you have this rescue acro. Now what this is, is you fly the plane like normal. Let's say you're flying and you're doing barrel rolls and you're coming down to the ground. Let go of your sticks. No, depending on which side is closest. So if the belly of the plane is closest to the ground, it's going to auto level right side up with the belly and fly like safe select. Okay, guys? If the top of the plane is closest to the ground, it's going to go ahead and fly upside down um, level. Uh, whatever... Top or bottom is closest to the ground. It's going to go to the closest side and it's going to do its normal flight. That's good for you if you guys are trying to learn to fly, do maneuvers and stuff like that. And you really don't want to have just the rescue function because rescue, you got to remember to flip the switch. This one, all you got to do is just take your hands off of the sticks. Okay. Stabilization normal. This right here, guys, this acts just like safe. And it's on all the time. It gives you a bank limit. It only lets you turn certain ways. Gear to the ground at all times. Okay. This one, guys, same thing. Uh, but it gives you more range. You fly it like normal, just like that uh, rescue acro. But this is on all the time. You don't need to flip a switch. You just let go of the control sticks and it'll save your plane. All right. Next, we're going to go to advanced. Your feed forward is when you're on head holding mode. And if you give it forward stick and it just quite doesn't go down, uh, feels too robotic, that's where you want to add more of this. Your stick dead band, that's like your expo. Aileron differential if you have it, and this will go ahead and show your trims. And then you also have your telemetry settings if you have your ESC hooked up through the Spirit. And a lot of people don't know this, but the Spirit will give you ESC uh, readings, no matter what ESC you use. Nine times out of ten, you get your receiver pack voltage. All right, guys, your telemetry settings, you go to backup, 
This is if you want to save a bank. This is if you want to save it to your computer. This is if you want to save it to the unit. Your lights, my light screens, I haven't changed anything. You'll go yellow if you did. And this is where you guys go to update your software. And that's pretty much it, guys. So to give you guys a, a quick rundown of how this is going to go ahead and work, let me go ahead and shut this off. I'll unplug this in the unit. Gyro off. Gyro off. Gyro off. All right, guys. Uh, forgive me. I'm going to go ahead and put this up on my head. I don't know if uh, you guys are going to go ahead and see the right angles. I'll try and tip my head down. So right here, guys, I got my transmitter. And this is my bank switching. So right now, I'm down. And as you can see, I only have my tail hooked up. But nothing's working. See that? Now I'll flip it up to bank one. Remember, bank one was just a head locking mode. Okay, I have to change that guys. Now if you look at the back, you hear that? It's working. So now I'm going straight up guys, and I'm going to crash into a cloud. I flip this bad boy up, and look at the elevator. Oh, look at that. I'm nice and squared away now. Got my rudder. Got my stabilization on. Now you can go ahead and you can even see the rudder working guys. See that rudder working? It will go ahead and it will save your butt. Now go ahead and throw it down to head holding mode. Notice that? See that? Acts just like everything else guys. Spirit, I'm telling you guys, you guys really need to look into this gyro. All right. Other things uh, guys, I've got this thing pretty much ready to run. Um, I talked with Terry at Sweet Wind Turbines. I noticed something on his turbine. Had my turbine too far forward. So I went ahead and I moved it a half inch back, guys. Um, let me go ahead and take this off. I didn't know anything about turbines. Like I said, I'm new. I had it at the stock holes. And the end of this funnel was right about right here. And what everybody was telling me is I've been reading about how hot these things get and all these things. So basically what it is, guys, I did a test. Um... Can't remember his name. I'll find out and I'll give you a shout out. Uh, what I did is I taped some uh, plastic ribbons right here. And I hit my turbine. And I noticed that since this was farther out, it was catching on the slip and blowing air forward. Where my ribbons, they were flapping around like this. That was hot air. That would make this bubble and all those bad things you hear about the jet. And uh, so I'm like, huh, so maybe it's not the jet. You know, it's the design. And when I say design, guys, these things are an ARF. You got to remember, like a Roban helicopter, if you put those mechanics in the fuselage, glue everything together, put your mechanics in flight, you're an idiot. You know, none of those screws have Loctite. They say it's an ARF ready to fly. It's not. This is an ARF almost ready to fly. But there are some tweaks. And I didn't know about the tweaks, but I've been on HSD Jets. Uh, owners... Uh, group and I've been finding out a lot. So what I did is I moved this uh, Terry told me you have to move this back He recommends a half inch to three quarters of an inch from where the bell starts right here So I moved it exactly there. I went ahead and I fired up and I had my ribbons here Guess what guys this ribbon got sucked into here This ribbon and that ribbon that had taped just nothing happened. They just stay there There was no turbulent airflow in here whatsoever so I knew all the hot gases going out the back were going out the back they weren't coming back in so I went ahead and I moved that back I got everything all nice and plumbed I got my fuel pump right there wire to my turbine my fuel pump I got my shut off valve everything's running nice and neat right through there line right here I still gotta I had to go ahead and take this off I had to cut a little bit off so I can go ahead and I don't like this. I had to pull it off. I'm going to cut some off. I don't like that big old loop there. I'll probably put it right there. Just one of my preferences. Um, my little makeshift guide to keep my line over there off of the receiver. One satellite here. I got the other one here. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, got my kerosene right there to make my fuel. And uh, hopefully, weather permitting, next weekend, 
um, she'd be up in the air and you guys would get some great videos. Well, guys, uh, thanks for coming by. Uh, hope you enjoyed the spirit. If you guys got any more questions about setting this thing up, uh, let me know uh, with the bank switching or anything like that. I can make more detailed videos. I just wanted to give you guys the rundown on this. If you've played with any other gyro, Bavarian Demon, or Hail Helicopter Fly Bar unit, this is going to be a no-brainer for you guys. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Thanks for coming by, guys. Once again, noon's out.